Hi, I'm Cassie, host of the Curiosity Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the subscribe button to follow us and receive new episodes each week. If you really enjoy the podcast and you're feeling generous, please hit the donate button. We work hard to create original content and keep the podcast ad free. Today's guest is a sought after speaker and leader. Please welcome Tracy Brady. I have you on today to talk about self-love, self-care topic and how we tend to put everything in front of ourselves and kind of forget to take care of and pay attention to what we need. How do we show love to ourselves through self-care without feeling guilty? Society or our conditioning, our societal conditioning certainly does contribute. We are not, most of us, brought up to think that we are supposed to or even should uh, take care of ourselves aside from the traditional tie your own shoes and feed yourself and get a job. And if you look at much of the, the media, what you have seen has been women who are encouraged to take care of themselves after mm-hmm. a long day at work or after the children have gone to bed. Then you can have a nice bath with XYZ bath salts or, <laughs> you know, uh, men, you know, you can have, have a nice steak on the grill for yourself after you have mowed the grass, after... <laughs> the dogs have been walked and the neighbors have been catered to. And the, you know, it's, it's a constant barrage of information, encouragement, actually, that takes us out of ourselves and into others, which plays upon our natural, animalistic, instinctual fears of being left out. That if we aren't good enough, that we, if we don't perform, if we aren't accepted by our peers or our pack, that we could be left. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the worst things a person can feel is to feel left out, alone, abandoned. And so part of, you know, as you can see, a lot of things go into this. And it's, a, it's no wonder that it's a struggle for people to overcome that because it's not going to be encouraged externally usually. It's just not. So how do we... And I, I love the, you brought up the fear piece, the fear of being left out and of causes us to do things that create the lack of self-care or the lack of self-love. Because I, I truly think that all of this stems back to the self-love piece. And I heard something the other day that the gal was saying, we should be teaching self-love to our children. We don't teach that. And I think, oh. Can I go back (laughs) and figure out how to start teaching that to the next generation? Because it is so important that we know how to love ourselves. Yeah, teaching teaching it would be wonderful. But first, we have to learn. Yes, absolutely. And we have to have an agreement within ourselves that it's the right thing to do, which is very difficult when it pulls at your heartstrings. You know, you you see an animal that's in need, or you see a child that's being abused, or you see a, a person who is in less happy circumstances or beneficial circumstances as yourself, and you want you want to do something. That's a natural instinct to care for each other. Even small, small children, even almost infants have this natural ability to comfort each other. They've done studies. So that's also something that we're up against is this pull to nurture and care. The thing about it is there's certain things that we have to do for ourselves. If you, if you consider the physical body, for example, you can put, if someone refuses to eat or cannot eat for whatever reason, you can put a tube in them and you can feed them. Hey. Right. You can, You can give that to them. You can do that for them. But in order for them to get any nourishment from that food or sustenance, they have to digest and assimilate that themselves. You cannot do that for them. And so if we realize that there are certain things that we must do for ourselves, physically, emotionally, spiritually, or our soul, then you can understand how no matter what someone does for us, there's a certain level of responsibility that we have to do 
to continue that and to do it for ourselves. Many, 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 many times we run up against this contradiction of someone needs my help and I can't stand the idea of not providing that. When you get to that place, let me ask you, Cassie, how would it feel for someone to give you something that they themselves needed, whether it's money, food, time, if they were taking away from something that they really needed and they say, here, let me give this to you, would that feel like a, would that, how would that feel to you? I would want them to take care of themselves first because right. that's, that's a powerful gift. However, they're taking away from what they need. Right. If in fact we are to help each other, you know, you've heard the old saying, we can't pour from an empty cup. So, um, we, you know, if we are perpetuating needy, irresponsible people by basically putting band-aids, you know, taking a band-aid off of myself and putting it on you when, and, and then my artery is spurting. How is that beneficial? You know, now we need to provide people a leg up, not one of our legs. Exactly. Yes. That's a great way to put it. And what a good visual. Yeah. Don't it, need to cut your own leg off to help somebody else. No. And it's not a foreign concept for us, really, when we get started in taking care of ourselves, that it starts to feel less foreign. It starts to feel right. And so I would encourage people and just to start, just to make a beginning. Think of the things that you do already to take care of yourself. You get out of bed and you brush your teeth. You might actually um, do things during the day that you don't realize how beneficial they are to yourself. And if you can intentionally maybe make a list of those things and then thank yourself for that. Just because we grow tall and get long hair or our hair changes or our voice changes and we get wrinkles, does not mean that we aren't still those precious children that need encouragement and love. Mm -hmm. Somehow we've got to be examples for others, our children, especially our adult children, that it's okay to take care of yourself. And it's not just okay. It's the responsible thing to do. It is the responsible thing because if I take care of myself, say financially, if I take in and have and I'm able and blessed enough to where I can save some for a rainy day, then I can possibly help others. Then I can donate. But if I'm donating or sharing finances when I haven't paid my bills or I don't have enough for a rainy day, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sleep well. I'm, it's going to affect every part of me. And I think there's probably going to be some pushback to that, but that is the same emotionally. You know, if I have some, some friends who are really good listeners and they actually love to listen to other people vent. They love it. And what I've found when they're talking to me about this, these are friends, not clients, that they, they are avoiding doing something in their own lives. And they're also uh, finding and seeking out people who have worse problems so that they can listen to them. And it makes them feel better about ignoring their problems. Ah, yes, is, I can totally see that. <laughs> well, that's just one example of how we distract ourselves in a good way, and we call it a, a, an honorable way of, of taking away something that we really, really need, which is our own attention. Mm. When we abandon ourselves, Cassie, it shows up in all sorts of ways where we try to compensate for that abandonment, addictions, distractions that are harmful. We're not comfortable as a society with going inward to our inner selves. But the running away from ourselves, which I think is how we abandon our self-care and self-love, perpetuates the society that starts with one person taking care of themselves. And yeah, you're going to have some guilt. You're going to have some feelings of guilt or thoughts of guilt. But does that let us off the hook? If I don't take care of myself, somebody's going to have to. Yes. Somebody's going to have to emotionally, physically, financially. 
Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm not perfect at it by any stretch. Yes. Okay. So you brought up two words that kind of resonated with me or one word and the other one just popped into my mind, turning in word and how difficult that is. It's not talked about. We don't talk about going inward and identifying the feelings in a moment and working through why that feeling is coming up. We just, no one talks about that. What can we do when we turn inward? You know, I'm a big proponent of mindfulness. I think everybody should do at least 10 minutes of mindful. I'm not even going to use the meditation word because that, (laughs) (laughs) but if you can just sit quietly for 10 minutes a day and maybe shut your eyes and turn off every audible sound you can control, that will at least introduce you to your inner self. Mm. I'm still not comfortable with my inner self because it is so different from the outer self. Mm. But there is something so intriguing and so beautiful about this separate world that I can't stay away for long. It, it becomes a draw. Right. It becomes something that draws me. And it's almost like food. I have to have it. Or when you're thirsty, you really know that you have it. And even if you don't do that, even if somebody doesn't want to do the 10 minute quiet thing a day, what you can do is pay attention to little things like, am I rushing about? Mm. Am I rushing? Think about, would you rush someone you cared about? No. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years back, I was very conscientious of trying to take care of myself because I realized nobody else was going to do it. Other people fail at that. We we max them out. We really do. We take and take and take, and then they can't give anymore. And then we're like, hey, you were, you were providing me this emotional, physical, financial support, and where the hell did you go? Right. And <laughs> at some point, about me. <laughs> I know, I know. And actually, it's our inner self saying that to ourself. What about me? I decided I would try it, and it's so uncomfortable. So I was standing at my counter writing something. The TV was on, a little bit too loud. My back was hurting because I'd been up all day. And I was standing there writing something on the counter, paying a bill or something, stressing out, thinking about something. And I noticed that there was a a bar stool right next to me. Now, this is my own home. Yeah. (laughs) And the TV was annoying. You know, I couldn't hear myself. And so those little cues are important to pay attention to. Our physical body is a very good barometer of what's going on inside. Mm. So... I said, hey, here's a good time to do this. What would you do for somebody that you loved? If, if your daughter or your partner or your mother or somebody you really care about, your best friend, was standing there enduring the TV, I would go shut it off for them, which I did. Then I offered myself a chair. Would you like to sit down? The whole time, Cassie, I was thinking, this is a waste of time. That's what the brain was saying, right? Because the conditioning is very strong. You know, Joe Dispenza talks about this. You have to do things that are ahead of this thinking or in, in spite of mm, yes. the thinking. So um, pay attention to your physical. Watch yourself. Watch your speed of thought, your speed of, of speech, your body. You know, am I sitting the way I really want to appear to, for myself? my my self-worth and my physical comfort? Do I need to straighten up? You know, are my legs crossed and they they don't feel that good? I think I'll uncross them. You know, grounding is a tool that people use all the time for high anxiety. But you don't have to wait till you're in a high anxiety state to attend to yourself. Right. And I tell you, the more we do that, the more we have for other people. And the better examples will be for those that we care about to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's okay to take care of yourself. And in fact, it's our responsibility. It's not, it's irresponsible to ask others to do for us what we can do for ourselves. Right. Yes. And I love that the thought of caring for yourself, like you would care for another individual. We don't do that. Like you said, the brain is telling us, 
keep going, push forward. That's ridiculous. That doesn't work. You got to stop and take a minute to just show yourself a little love and care. Yeah. You know, when you're a little girl, the message that you get when you have a need is it's okay. It doesn't matter. That's not important. And that's not because our caregivers don't think we're important. It's just, they don't know how to care for their own needs. So they encourage us to distract in ways that they have seen helps food, TV, play a game. You know, you're, you're sad because you didn't get to go to a party that your friend had. Oh, let me distract you from that feeling because I don't know how to deal with it myself. Uh, well, I go, I, I'm doing that because I'm like, I've done that my whole life. And it's funny because I see it in my own kids. You see that you've taught them to distract, ignore that, keep moving forward. This will pass. Like, just ignore it. <laughs> push it down, push it down. I'm like, ah, yeah, that's interesting. I know, it's, it's a great topic, really great, and, and much needed. I think it completely permeates the social fabric of today. Let me take care of you mm-hmm. and neglect me. Right. When we pour from a full cup, we've got enough left over. But when we pour from a, a, a low or empty cup, it's, it doesn't help anybody. And you know, one of the motivators I've found, since we are so motivated to love others and to alleviate suffering in others, is to remember that when I am alleviating my own suffering, I have a personal experience that I can then share with others. And that's true compassion and true empathy, as opposed to let me alleviate your suffering so that I don't have to see it. Yes, I love that. What would we leave someone with today, advice-wise? You've heard of mindful eating. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's got an hour and a half to eat their cereal in the morning. But you don't have to have that. You don't have to take that much time. You can just be grateful for the fact that you can chew, that you can taste, that you can see the colors of the berries. This is a person. This is a body. This is an entity that is serving my soul. This is a a house for my spirit. Mm. When I abandon my spirit or abandon my house, this is a set of chemicals here running up and down right here, okay? When, When my thinking or my attention goes to the past or the future, I have abandoned the present. Mm. And what's gonna happen is there's going to be a surge of chemicals because there is nothing, there is no thinking or, or spirit present to protect my house. Mm. But I abandon it. So being present in my body, when you notice that your thoughts have gone away from the present moment, bring them back and say, I'm here for you and I'm not going to desert you. When I get distracted, I'll come back because you're important to me. One of the things that I did a few years back was I looked in the mirror in the bathroom in my eyes and I said, I am so sorry. I have not been here for you and I'm going to do my best to be here for you. Weird, felt weird, but felt right. Mm -hmm. Felt right. And in no manner did it, did the consequences of that hurt anybody I know. It actually made me much more present to my own fears, my own suffering, so that I could get through that and and nurture myself through that. It helps me understand when others are feeling a certain way so that I can say, I've been there, here's where we go with this. Being present for our own suffering and our own joys and acknowledging those goes a long way in helping others. I like that. It's much more difficult than it sounds being present. It's not easy, but it's like, it's like lifting weights. It's kind of like a muscle. Mm-hmm. It, you know, you don't see the, the change, but in a few weeks, you're like, huh, that was a little bit easier. And, and sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes our brain is a little more active. Sometimes it's a little more difficult to um, accept some of the thinking. There's so many 
things and levels to the self-love piece that, I mean, trust goes in there, um, depending on yourself, there's just layers and layers. And I'm completely consumed with really wanting to understand that. And I don't want to say be better at it, but learn to embrace the whole thing. I'm thinking, if I'm thinking about these things, if I'm curious, there's got to be a ton of other people who are just as curious and have no one to turn to. I mean, you can go to books and stuff, but without someone to talk it through or to, to listen to someone else's experience, I think it's really hard to absorb all that there is with yeah. self-love. We, we all need uh, people to encourage us and, and, um, be examples and guide us. And um, I am by no means a professional self lover, but uh, I do a hundred thousand percent know in my heart of hearts that that is one of the ways focusing in, turning toward, not abandoning mm. our own self. That is the way we can heal the world because if, we can't go out and heal the world until we heal ourselves. I mean, you can help, but you cannot neglect yourself. You can't neglect while you're helping others. You cannot neglect yourself or you're going to, you're going to burn out. Right. And then you're no, you're no help to yourself or to the world. <laughs> so you uh, have to you're filling up your own cup. I think that's the key is we, like you said, we're responsible for loving ourselves, for taking care of ourselves. It's not someone else's responsibility. It is 100% ours. And the other thing I loved that you said was, how would you treat someone else knowing they were feeling the emotion you're feeling right now? Anger, frustration, sadness, depression, happiness. How would you treat another human being? That's how you should treat yourself. I love that. It's a great one. So thank you, Tracy. I appreciate you being here and continuing to, to support and teach the rest of us. Good to be here, Kat. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the subscribe button to follow us and receive new episodes each week. If you really enjoy the podcast and you're feeling generous, please hit the donate button. We work hard to create original content and keep the podcast ad-free.